They say no man is an island unless you are Samuel. Oh, I forgot to turn my ring on the light, Don. That's how little I am prepared. That will do. Welcome to the Bookaboy Book Club, where we are discussing all of the long-listed booker books for this year. And we're going to talk about the frustratingly titled An Island. Honestly, like, all I want to do is call it The Island, but it's An Island by Karen Jennings. Jennings' book is the most surprising to everyone on this list. Why? Well, Holland House, the publisher that produced this, only put out 500 copies. In fact, at the time that Booker announced this on the long list, it only had 10 reviews on Goodreads. I think it's fair to assume that no one has heard about this book. And one reason why I do enjoy prizes is that you find authors that you never would have heard of. And Karen Jennings is going to be a new name on everyone's mind. Jennings is a South African author and an island is set off the coast of South Africa. But don't think this is going to be talking about apartheid. In an island, the main conflict is in Africa. And Africa is treated not as a continent, but almost as a country. You might think that reductive, but Jennings has given us an overall picture of the history of Africa, especially when it comes to the colonizers, the scramble for Africa, when people came in floods claiming the land that they thought was rightfully theirs. What happens after this period? Yes, that's the rub. But Samuel, our main character, has an idea. He's just going to leave. He's going to live on an island. He's going to become the sole inhabitor of it, where there are no colonists. There are no politics. There is no violence. There is no poverty. But by being the sole inhabitant, he technically is the ruler. He technically is the colonizer. He technically is the tyrant. Could you be any of those things being the only person? This is where the story starts and therefore lies. Samuel does meet people. They do come onto his island. They're not alive, sadly. They're dead. They're refugees. They're some bodies. They're no bodies. He used to have a relationship with the government on shore but they ask questions of well how dark are they what cheekbones do they have are they are they darker than us jump in the gun you might think well this is a south african author you said this wasn't about apartheid surely this is about apartheid they've mentioned skin they've mentioned color they mentioned how do people look well sadly africa does have a lot of black on black violence yes apartheid is a significant part of history and a major civil event but you don't have to focus on South Africa and apartheid. You have to look at the other places of Africa. And there is violence everywhere. And Samuel has always been within the violence. His town is burnt down. He has seen his village members be shot by the colonists because they weren't moving too fast. His father, who wanted to start a revolution, an independent movement, is brutally maimed. Violence is a shadow that's just outside the periphery and Samuel feels as though being underneath the canopy of the island he won't have to find that anywhere else. So he buries the people that the government doesn't want to collect from his island. 32 bodies are buried into a wall of Samuel's island and another body is to turn up and Samuel goes about his day-to-day -day life dealing with the bodies until it revives, it breathes, and starts to speak. But it doesn't speak the same language as Samuel. Samuel doesn't really understand anything that this man is saying. Samuel, an old man who was adjusted to splendid isolation, now has to deal with another person. They've come onto, they've approached, they've invaded his island. And Samuel feels as though it's all his. And we get these violent images coming to Samuel of how he's going to kill this person. And let's talk about Jennings' style of writing. This book is all over the place. I really struggle to track, plot and trace out the timeline here. And it really does take a, a lot of work and a lot of pages to kind of cement what Jennings is doing because 
while he's dealing with very mundane stuff on the island with this stranger, we're going back to his childhood to see the colonizers. But then we'll go forward to after he's come out of prison and then we'll go back before he was in prison meeting with his friends talking about oranges and then we'll go back to the island and then we'll talk about his father then he's talking about his missing son then his time in prison and it's a lot it's it's a lot to track and Jenin has a very unique style of writing which is very similar to David Mitchell's number nine dream where it's a little bit daydreamy Samuel sees these events happen but it's described as though they are happening and then Jennings will kind of just pull you back and go actually none of that happened did not like it it's, it's very jarring it's very jarring but one thing I will say is Jennings is bringing something very different very unique and predominantly I would say when we're talking about people in conflict they are the protagonists they're the people who are trying to avoid everything and we we follow them escaping danger where Samuel's more the antagonist I just couldn't make sense of some of the pages I, I didn't really understand why Samuel had gone to prison for a really good length of time I didn't understand where the son had come into this I wasn't sure anything to do with the past was just it's just a blur it's a complete blur the, the moments where he's on the island are like the strongest pieces of writing especially towards the end however I will say it's it's wrapped up very quickly it's kind of this is a symbol this is a metaphor boom there we go and there's a there's a moment with the sun at the end i re do you know what i i'm gonna put my hands up i don't think i got this book i'd love to say that jones was close to hitting the bullseye but we're on like a triple one on the dartboard where we're the furthest thing we can get from it castaways we are castaways ahoy 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 there. Let's try, come on, let's see if we can come up with something. I'm going to reread this book. I'm just going to reread it. Let's, I'll see you tomorrow. Let's, let's just, let's just reread it. An island in the stream that is what we are is probably what this man is trying to tell Samuel. But because of that language barrier, Samuel doesn't know that it's his turn to start singing. But what Samuel does know is how to stop an invasive plant on this island, which really is a contradiction because even though it's an invasive species, he calls it smotherweed. It just smothers everything. It gets all across the island and it disrupts everything. Think of it like Japanese knotweed. So he decides for a year to eradicate it, to cut it all back. But again, how can it be an invasive species when it's indigenous to the island it was there before him who's really invasive why does he feel it's his right to stop something native and again you have that twist of view and how does he stop the smotherweed well i mentioned that he buries bodies 32 bodies in a wall that is to stop the smotherweed from smothering propped up by cadavers samuel is indicating that he wants to be left alone he's not only isolated himself from the world but the world is almost repelling samuel both of them don't really want to intermix samuel's repulsion and repelling nature isn't just applicable to the island after he's come out of prison he meets up with friends from long ago and asks some questions and it seems to be tension between them there seems to be a want to separate themselves from what they were to what they are now. What's also repulsive and repellent is how this story is written. I hate it. And you know what I hate even more? That I've set up this. I thought it was like a little like quirky little joke. Like if you read it because it's set over four days, that my review would be set over four days. But I have nothing to say. You know what's going to happen on the fourth day. It's kind of geared up towards that. But now I have to like 
walk off or like pretend to walk off just so I can come back here and, and say what I did. Oh, do you know, let's just do it. Right, let's do, let's do the next day. It's a two out of ten. You can join the Testaments Club. Now, if you feel a look dead enough to rock up on my island and you want to disagree with me click and join the book a boy book club and you can argue with me in real time however for this book i'm probably not going to listen bye